Hello everyone. In last lecture, we have discussed construction and principle of ballistic galvanometer. In today's lecture, I am going to discuss working and theory of ballistic galvanometer. Okay. Now let us see working of ballistic galvanometer. Okay. Here you can see that the first point when a current passes through the galvanometer coil it experiences a magnetic deflecting torque which tends to rotate it from its rest position okay now let us explain the first point using block diagram here you can see that this is the galvanometer coil let us suppose current i passes through galvanometer coil in the presence of radial magnetic field which is parallel to the plane of galvanometer coil due to this radial magnetic field when current passes through copper coil this coil experiences magnetic deflecting torque at the sides we can find direction of force by using Fleming's left hand rule. Here you can see that the middle finger gives direction of current and the forefinger gives direction of magnetic field and thumb gives direction of force. Here at the this side the direction is the direction of force is out of board. Here you can see that the force acts out of board here the current is in upward direction that is the middle finger gives us direction of current and forefinger gives us direction of magnetic field and thumb gives us direction of force here you can see that the direction of force is into the board Due to this couple of force, this coil that is galvanometer coil rotates from its initial position to some position. Here, I will try to explain the same situation by taking copper coil. Here you can see that I have taken a copper coil which is having n number of turns. Here when current I passes through this copper coil which is placed between magnetic field that is radial magnetic field which is parallel to the plane of coil. Due to this magnetic field when current I flows through the coil it experiences magnetic deflecting torque that is one force is acting into the board another force is acting out of board due to this parallel forces which are in opposite direction this coil experiences magnetic deflecting torque due to this torque this coil rotates from its initial position to some extent that is some point okay now let us see the next point as the coil rotates it produces a twist in the suspension strip here you can see that when coil rotates it produces twist in the suspension strip here you can see I will try to explain the same situation by taking this example here you can see that this is the copper coil this is the mirror and this is the suspension strip here you can see that this is the suspension spring when current I flows through this copper coil in the, in the presence of magnetic field this copper coil experiences torque due to this magnetic deflecting torque this coil rotates from its initial position to some position when this coil rotates it produces twist in the suspension strip and in suspension spring here you can see that when coil rotates from its initial position 
it produces twist in the suspension strip this is second point okay now let us see the next point here a twist in the strip produces an elastic restoring torque here you can see that when the coin rotates it produces twist in the suspension strip here what happens when twist produced in the suspension strip due to the property of elasticity a restoring force is developed in this strip here a restoring couple is developed here here i will try to explain same situation when this coil rotates a twist is produced in the posper posper bronze strip and in suspension spring and due to the property of elasticity a restoring force is developed in the strip here also a restoring force is developed due to the property of elasticity okay now let us see the next point here the coil rotates until the elastic restoring torque due to the strip does not equal here you can see that when current i flows through the copper coil in the presence of magnetic field this copper coil rotates when this copper coil rotates a twist is produced in the suspension due to this twist a restoring force is developed in the suspension and this copper coil it keeps on rotating when the restoring force which is developed in the suspension is not equal that is magnitude of the restoring force which is developed in the suspension is not equal to the magnetic deflecting torque and the last point here you can see that when restoring torque is equal to deflecting torque then it attains equilibrium and stops rotating any further here you can see that when coin rotates it produces twist in the suspension due to this twist in the suspension a restoring force is developed due to the property of elasticity and this coin it is keeps on rotating and suddenly it will stop when the magnitude of restoring couple which is developed in the suspension becomes equal to the magnetic deflecting couple then this copper coil stops rotating i will try to explain it by taking this example here you can see that when a current i passes through the copper coil this copper coil due to presence of radial magnetic field this copper coil rotates from its initial position it will rotate this rotation produces twist in the suspension strip here it produces twist in the suspension strip due to this twist a restoring couple or restoring torque is developed in the suspension strip and this this copper coil it keeps on rotating and suddenly it will stop rotation when the restoring torque which is developed in the suspension strips become equal to the magnetic deflecting torque okay this is all about working of ballistic galometer okay now let us study theory of ballistic galometer before going to study theory of ballistic galometer i would like to recall few things i would like to recall few formulas which we have already studied here you can see here you can see the formulas it is the comparison between linear motion and rotational motion here you can see that newton's second law which is equals to f is equals to ma in rotational motion newton's second law is given by tau is equals to 
i into alpha. Similarly, moment is equals to p is equals to m v in a rotational case l is equals to i into omega. In the same way, work is equals to integral force into dx in rotational motion work done is equals to integral tau into d theta and kinetic energy in a case of linear motion kinetic energy is equals to 1 by 2 mv square in a case of rotational motion kinetic energy is equals to the 1 by 2 i omega square where i is the moment of inertia omega is the angular frequency here one thing we need to remember here you can see that we are going to use these all formulas in while studying theory of ballistic galometer i am going to use this second law in rotational motion case newton's second law here newton's second law in a case of rotational motion is given by tau is equals to i into alpha that is this is the moment of inertia it is the angular acceleration here we know that angular acceleration is equals to d omega by dt if you substitute this value here we get d omega by d omega by dt and if you interchange terms we will get tau dt is equals to i d omega this is the change in angular frequency and it is the change in time if and if we integrate this equation we will get tau dt is equals to i into integral d omega and which is equals to i omega it is integral tau dt here you can see this is the tau into dt which gives angular angular impulse and i into d omega which gives change in angular change in angular moment and integral tau into dt is equals to i omega that is total angular angular impulse is equals to angular moment angular moment here we need to note that total angular impulse is, is equals to angular moment here you can see that angular impulse which is responsible for the change in angular momentum finally we need to remember this equation that is integral tau into dt is equals to i omega